Okay, and just a quick note before we move on. Um, in the last bit, I said that sadly, when you select a pad in Drum Machine Designer, it doesn't auto-select the voice in the ultra beat connected to that pad. Well, as a viewer reminded me, there is a way to do it, and I'd forgotten about it, to be honest. Voice auto-select up at the top here of the ultra beat. Switch it on, and then, yes, the voices in ultra beat do auto-select when you select a pad. Okay, now, I don't advise using this, which is probably why I've forgotten all about it. I never use it. I don't advise using it because of the following reason. Yes, if you switch it on, you select a pad, the ultra beat voice connected to the pad, it does auto select. But if you then want to tweak the synthesis for that ultra beat voice or edit the smart controls or something while it's being triggered from a pattern on the track, as soon as those MIDI notes start triggering the ultra beat voices, every time a MIDI note triggers a voice, it gets auto-selected, and they all jump around and all hell breaks loose. Watch. You know, so I just say, forget it. Just get used to manually selecting the voices for pads, okay? It's not that hard, for God's sake. I mean, you select the ride. All these voices are title look. Ride, after party. Yeah, hi-hat two. I had to after party. So just get used to manually selecting the voices for pads, but bear in mind there is that voice auto select. All right, all right. let's move on. Okay, building custom kits. Let's start with the really easy stuff. The simplest way to make a custom kit is we just change the sounds for the pads. So we make a different compilation of sounds, okay? Um, now, as I said before, bear in mind that these pads are categorized by type. So if I select a kick pad, the library takes me to kicks, I can load a different factory kick. If I select a snare pad, the library takes me to snares to load a different factory snare. Okay, so let's start just loading different factory voices into these pads. Okay, so kick pad, load a kick, snare pad, load a snare, click, let's load a click, clap, let's load a clap, hi hat one, let's load a hi hat. Hat two, open hat, low tom, slide a low tom, mid tom, high tom, and you just carry on like that, loading different factory sounds into the pads. So now my kit comprises of the big room kick, beat machine snare, deep tech click, neon claps, Ibiza hats and the uh, video star toms. All right, really easy. Now, if I save the project, this new collection of sounds will load with that project with the drum machine designer every time. If I want to save this as a kit to load into future projects, we always click on the icon and title bar at the top to go to the default stereo kit view. We have to do that first. Then we click save at the bottom of the library. That takes you to your user patch location. Give your kit a title, I'll call mine After Party 2. Save, bomb, there it is in user patches. After Party 2, I can load this into any future project. Okay, now, again, this whole business of the pads being categorized by type. That's a kick pad, that's a snare pad, that's a hat pad, that's a tom pad, etc. Okay, now check this out. In the stack, we know. Okay, all our ultra beat outputs. Yeah, they are all submixed down to the six submixes by category of drum. Okay, now here's the thing. If I choose a kick pad, this is a kick pad. The library takes me to kicks to load up a different factory kick. And yes, if I want to, I could switch to any other category of sound like toms. I could load a tom onto this kick pad. Let's do it. Okay, now there's a tom on this kick pad. But because it's on a kick pad, it's still rooted to the kick submix in the stack. Okay, so you can load any other type of voice other than a kick onto a kick pad, but it's still going to be rooted to the kick submix. You can load any other type of voice other than a snare onto the snare pad, but it's still going to be rooted to the snare and clap submix. You can load any other type of voice other than a hi hat onto a hi hat pad but it's still going to be rooted to the hi-hat submix. 
Okay, so just bear in mind there's that categorization of the pads. All right. And yes, when we get further into customizing our kits, we can edit the stack. That's what we're going to get into when we go deeper. And then we can route any of these ultra beat outputs to any submix we want. We can even create additional custom submixes, you know, but just bear that in mind. All right. Um, show. Let's um, let's close this stack. Okay, I'm going to undo the loading of that Tom onto that kick pad. Come on, Z to undo, well, and it goes back to the original voice. Um, by the way, you can do Command Z, undo, undo over and over, and it will keep on undoing the loading of voices uh, going back in history, which is pretty useful. Okay, now um, the other way to change the voice for a pad is to replace the sample in the ultra beat for the ultra beat voice connected to the pad and it's really easy to do uh, let's do it for the snare right click on the pitch open plug in window that opens the ultra beat here's our ultra beat okay so let's replace the snare sample that's the snare pad it's connected to this voice in the ultra beat and like all the ultra beat voices um, for pretty much all the factory drum machine designer voice patches it's a single ultra beat oscillator voice with the sample in the bottom oscillator. There's the sample. Snare one beat machine AIF. That's the current sample for this voice connected to the beat machine snare pad. Okay, so we're going to change this sample. Load sample. That takes you to your ultra beat factory kits samples location. Um, ultra beat samples in all these folders are all the samples for all the ultra beat factory kits but obviously you can go to any disk location to load your own custom samples um, now if we latch this play button here down on the finder the current sample that's loaded begins to trigger and then when you click on any other sample you hear it auditioned we can also preview sample in ultra beat voice but I don't want to get into this now okay everything about this is covered in the Ultra Beat tutorials. As I've said previously, go and watch the Ultra Beat tutorials. You really need to learn this in depth because it's the engine behind Drum Machine Designer. Okay. So um, I am going to load up a different snare sample. I'm going to look in this gritty funk folder here. All right. What have we got? We've got these two snares. So I'll go with that snare sample. Open, and I've loaded the snare sample. Easy peasy, right? Now when you change the sample, um, if you set your voice volume here to a reasonable level, which is between minus six and minus four dB, if you find that your newly loaded sample is either too quiet or too loud, you can change the level of the voice on its slot here with the blue slider. Each voice slot has a slider, which is like a fader for the level for the voice, so you can change it if your new sample is too quiet or too too loud. All right, so there's my new sample loaded. Easy peasy. Okay. The other way to change the Ultrabeat voice connected to a pad is to import an Ultrabeat drum voice from another factory kit. And again, this was covered in the Ultrabeat tutorials, but let's do it. Let's do it for the um, click. So this click is connected to this ultra beat voice. Again, it's a single oscillator ultra beat voice with a sample in the bottom oscillator there. Look, click Deep Tech AIF. But this time we're not going to change the sample, we're going to import a different voice. We go to import at the top, click it. That takes you to your ultra beat kits location. And in um, the ultra beat folder here, you'll see this drum kits folder. And in there, these are all your kit files. Okay, these aren't samples. These are all the actual Ultrabeat factory kits. So you choose the factory kit you want to import a voice from. I'll choose African kit, open. And this list drops down, and these are all the voices from the African kit. You can uh, click and audition them. Okay, so you choose the voice you want to import. I'll go with this one, and you just drag and drop it into the voice slot you want to replace, in this case, the click. Boom, done. And drop the list away with the arrow. So I've now imported a factory voice from another Ultrabeat factory kit into this voice slot. 
connected to the click pad. Yeah. Easy peasy. Okay now, if you do either of those things, change the sample or import a, a, a voice from another factory kit, these smart controls for the pad on the drum machine designer here, they just work. All right, 99.99% .99 of the time, all of them just work. When you change the sample in the ultra beat or import a different factory voice into the ultra beat, that in no way changes the ultra beat voice output channel in the stack for that ultra beat voice. All we're doing is changing the sample or importing a completely different voice into the slot, but that doesn't change its output channel in the stack, it doesn't touch it at all. So these smart controls here, all the smart controls connected to the output channel and the effects need Q on the output channel, they all work. The only issue you may have occasionally is with the pitch and length, because for all the drum machine designer voices, these two controls, pitch and length, are pretty much usually the only two controls connected to the actual ultra beat voice. Okay, now the only issues you might get is with the length, go with our snare here. We know the length controls the amp envelope decay. Now this will be set at its maximum travel to give an amp envelope decay time for the previous sample or voice. And if your newly imported sample or your newly imported voice is longer and needs more time to play all the way through, then this length control may not give a long enough time in which case you'll need to edit the length control so that at its maximum travel it gives a longer amp envelope decay time to let the new sample or the newly imported voice play all the way through properly. But that is rare and you just edit this length control, it's easy to do. The only other issue you might have is, have is with the pitch control. Okay, if you change the sample in the bottom oscillator you won't have a problem with the pitch control, it'll just carry on controlling the pitch of the bottom oscillator and it'll just pitch the new sample instead. But if you do the voice import and import a different factory voice, the newly imported voice may use two oscillators. Sometimes that happens, in which case the pitch control set for the previous voice will only control the bottom oscillator. And you'd have to edit the pitch control so that it will then control the pitch of both oscillators for the newly imported voice. But again, that is rare. And we can edit this pitch control if we need to. Okay, we can edit these controls. Um, it's not that hard to do. We'll get to that soon. Okay, so there you go. That's the other different ways to change the sound for a pad. Okay, so um, I've updated the snare and the click here, so I'm not just going to overwrite this kit to update. Uh, click on the icon and title bar at the top. Bottom of the library, click Save. Takes me to my user patch location. I'll just overwrite after party two to update it. Replace. Boom, there it is, saved. Okay. So that's your basics, absolute basic start away for making a custom kit. We're just changing the sounds for the pads to make a different collection of sounds. And we do that with three different techniques. We load f different factory voices into the pads from the library. We change the sample in the ultra beat for the ultra beat voice connected to a pad. Or we import a voice from another ultra beat factory kit into the voice slot in the ultra beat connected to a pad. Okay, so let's move on and go into it deeper now.